Hello, I'm Greg, a sailor, bagpiper, and all around jack of all trades. Today's goal uh, will be to make sure my audio is working, as it wasn't the last time I filmed. Um, but I have the new starter for the boat, and my goal is to get the starter installed, check all the wiring for the engine, and figure out why I wasn't getting power to it and then see if I can get the engine started again and then winterize the engine. When I pulled the starter and bench tested it myself, I didn't get anything, but I think my little jumper pack had some issues. Uh, but I took it up to the shop and he tested it and while the starter spun, uh, the Bendix, <coughs> excuse me, Bendix had problems and he was concerned that, you know, when it would, it hit the starter, it would shoot up, engage with the flywheel teeth and start the engine, but then it wouldn't pull back. And the issue or problem there is that it could, you know, the starter motor gears would be still engaged with the flywheel gears and you could break teeth on the flywheel. And I thought replacing the starter motor is a lot cheaper than trying to pull the engine and separate the transmission from the engine and replace the flywheel. So, new starter and also found a new shutoff cable <clears throat> so we can install that and then I'll be able to reset the idle. Uh, last time when Chuck was here and we got the engine started, throttling down killed the engine and that's never a good thing to have happen. Especially if you're coming into a dock and you throttle down, the engine dies on you, could be a problem. So I need to set the idle a little bit higher so that the engine won't die when you throttle it down. And then the question is, how do you stop the engine? Well, that's what the stop cord is for. So hopefully we'll get that going. Uh, I just was out at the boat and noticed a little bit of an issue with my cover. You never want to tie the cover to the jack stands because if the wind blows really hard and it yanks and tugs, it could pull a jack stand off. So I looped the line around the bottom of the keel and tied the port side to the starboard side. Well, I'll go out and show you the challenges of doing it that way also. Um, I do know some people have taken like uh, gallon, plastic gallon bottles and filled it with sand and used those to hang off of the cover to hold the cover down. That may be a way to go. We'll wait and see. So. Anyway, that's today's episode. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we'll try this again because I just filmed everything without having the microphone turned on. Uh, we are dealing with the remnants of Nicole right now. And you can see what that did to my cover. So the wind rattling and looping around managed to rotate the cover a little bit on the boat. Also, I see that two lines came untied. <clears throat> I was concerned the grommets pulled out, but they didn't. So anyway, I have to uh, think about the knots that I'm using. Maybe a couple of half hitches is not the best knot and I should go back to just tying bolins or some other type of running hitch to help hold the cover down. The rest of the fleet seems to be okay. Covers are still on and no issues with them. So, otherwise, boat looks pretty good. Well, I'm in the boat now. We've got the cover resecured, and now I'm soaking wet. Because, of course, it started to rain again as I began that project. My glasses are completely covered in water. Um, and I'd put the starter motor and my tools and bucket and everything at the stern of the boat. And when I started to shift the cover, a whole lot of water poured down all over everything. Fortunately, the GoPros are waterproof. Not so much other things, paper bags and, you know. But anyway, so out on the boat now. And I think what I'd like to do with the engine is check wiring first off. Um, and I also brought out some sandpaper and some dielectric silicon compound, dielectric grease. I think I want to pull 
basically every wire from the engine and sand them down a little bit, clean up the contacts, put dielectric grease and put them back on just to ensure that there is a good contact for every wire going to the engine. Uh, and that will eliminate any faulty grounds or faulty connections, at least on that front. I also bought a couple of scrub brushes. I can put handles on and one of my goals is to really get down and completely scrub out the bilges um, all the way along, especially way down in there to the bottom of the keel, where in the last video uh, I showed and talked about, of course the audio wasn't there so I had to overdub it afterwards, the, um, the hole that's in the, they drilled into the keel, so I'm going to put in, I'll be end up put a plug just somewhere around here, um, a bronze, silicone bronze plug into the bottom of the keel so that that can be removed to drain all the water out of the bilges. I, know, I really don't like having holes in my boat, but it's already there. So either I fiberglass the hole closed again, or we just put a garbage plug in there so that we can drain stuff out at the end of the season. And it might probably make sense to do that because then we can flush the bilges out and make sure that they stay nice and clean. So let's move on to getting the starter installed. So here is the new starter. And one of the issues that the starter person said and this looks like they changed it. The old starter, the body was steel and all the rest of this was aluminum and they're dissimilar metals. And so, you know, the challenge was trying to get those two apart when they've been any length of time um, was going to be almost impossible. And he wasn't sure that even if he was able to get them apart, whether he could clean them up and whether they would go back together again. So that decision was fairly easy to say, you know what, let's just get the new starter motor. And now, let's see if we can make it fit. So I have a little clip-on light that makes it a little easier to see things. So here is this sort of rat's nest of wires. I'm not really thrilled about, you know, seeing just things wrapped in electrical tape. Here are a couple of wires that aren't connected to anything. Um, these two go into that little thing. So, you know, there's got to be this, I'm assuming, is a loose connection. Um, doesn't stay on there very well. I can probably crimp that down a little bit, clean it up somewhat. That looks like it's going into water, so I would assume that's the high temp um, alarm, which I have not heard any alarms go off when I turn the key on. Here are all of the wires on the back side of the alternator. Somewhere there must be a low oil pressure sensor. Oh, sorry about that. Here's a ground. Here's the oil filter. All right, right behind that is another plug that's fairly loose. So that one is probably the low oil. Yep, something going into the block. Um, so, and then you know, here is the wiring harness that's coming back from the instrument cluster. And somewhere on that harness, there's got to be a, a wire that peels off and goes into the main system to get power. And that we've got to track down because I think that's one of the issues well, in that why we weren't getting any juice going to the starter motor because there was no power. Again, the wiring is a mess. I mean, look at all of these cut off wires, disconnected wires, capped off wires, float switch, F-L-O-T, cute. Um, you know, so many wires that are just in here and capped off. It's like, well, or 
no caps. Two wires twisted together with no... Ay, nothing. Not, not great. Not the way it should be. And you can see a lot of corrosion on all of these wires. So I like the original Bristol Yachts, Bristol, Rhode Island panel and would like to keep that if at all possible. I think most of the fuses look like the, the fuse holders look okay. Maybe we can clean those up and then replace a lot of the switches. See if we can find something that looks original to replace all of these other ones. So anyway, we'll, uh, I think this switch must be to switch back and forth between the voltmeter and the batteries so we can see what how much charge is in each battery. I'm procrastinating from the starter motor, obviously. All right, let's get into it. All right, well, I pulled the instrument cluster again. And when Chuck were here, he's got better color vision than I do. Maybe he could figure out some of the color wiring since I'm color deficient. They say men don't read instructions. So, looking at the wiring from the cluster, you can see this is the whole cluster. A couple of connects, goes down here. One lead goes to the starter motor. One goes up to, well, that's the ground, there's the ground. Here's positive to the battery switch, positive to the starter motor. A couple more wires going to the starter motor. Some going up to the alternator. That's going to the tachometer. That's going to the oil pressure switch. That's going to the cool water. And that's going to the fuse box. So we've seen the fuse box in the back. Oh, uh, maybe we should check the fuse box and see if the fuse is blown. It doesn't look like, other than this main power coming back to the starter motor, there's no other connection from this whole cluster to the battery. So the fuse may be the first thing we should take a look at since it ran and then it didn't. And that's the fuse. And we want to be checking resistance, which is ohms. So, fuse is good. We can put that back in. Oh, huh. Interesting. Well, here's one wire to the side of the fuse. Oh, and it's all corroded. It does fit on loosely. It's pretty pooched. These are, I don't know if you can see, but there's a flat piece of metal that curves around here, goes and curves around there, and those two pieces come in and provide provide the pressure when you slide it on to hold it in place. This one is so corroded, most of those, at least one of them, is missing. Um, so I think we'll cut those off and replace those. Um, and then put the starter in and give it a shot. Seems like a good way to go at this point. Well, surprise, surprise, these two rusty looking screws came right out and I was able to pull the whole fuse panel, fuse holder out and you can see all the corrosion on these contacts. Unfortunately, my sandpaper got a little bit damp when the water came off the cover. I may have to go down below, down, down below, down to my workshop and get another piece of sandpaper. I know, you're cringing at what I'm doing to my jackknife. Of 
Fortunately, it's fairly easy to sharpen and I do it quite regularly. Yeah, this sandpaper is just garbage. It's not wet dry paper. <laughs> See, I try sanding and the, the sand just comes right off and there's nothing but paper. Okay, down to the shop, get a couple of decent pieces of sandpaper. Be right back. Well, that's what I like to see. Nice brass, not corrosion. Now, problem is that my connectors do not have the covers on them that these do. Cut that one off. The wire is, you can see a little black, a little corroded but I don't dare cut too far back because there may not be enough wire left. That's not in horrible condition. That wire looks a little bit better. So I was able to take that little blue off, crimp that down tight, slide that over. That looks pretty good. No, it doesn't. I guess it really does want to have the blue, that blue plastic helps retain from doing it. Might as well do it right, even if it means wasting a couple of little crimp on connectors. Now is the time to do it. The issue, obviously, is that something could potentially fall on it, hit those two, and short, short out. But, you know, way back here on the back side of the engine, I'm not quite sure what there is that might... Aha! Okay, I got one of them on. How come I can't get the other one to go up? There we go. Oh, I feel so much better now. They're covered. Make sure I don't drop the screws, because that's a long way down into the bottom of the bilge. I do have a magnet that I could recover things with, but why put yourself through more trouble than you need to? One set of connections done. Now we can see that looks reasonably good. power connects to that one. Then there's two other wires that tie in to the starter motor. One goes to that leg on the solenoid. My shop is a mess again. We took down a birch tree at church and so I have cut them all up. These are ultimately going to be more candlesticks. You like them as a different heights. And then I will use a Forstner bit. Drill a hole on the top of it that's the exact same size as a tea light candle. And we'll have more candlesticks. I'm not quite sure why I'm doing this. I already have a box with a lot of them down in the basement that I haven't gotten rid of, but they're there. So I do it. The other thing is my workbench is becoming a mess again. There is the Furlex. I found 
a new stanchion base at the boneyard. This one got a little bit bent, and that one's not identical, but it's close enough that I think it'll work. These are the halyards. Um, that's the old jib halyard. That is the old spin halyard, I think. They both looked about the exact same, but one of them has been run through the washing machine. And these are all of the other halyards, the fur roller furler, main halyard, topping lift. Um, actually, I think this one is the topping lift. Yes, it's the topping lift because it's badly worn and needs to be replaced. So these are all the lines that need to be replaced. That's the uh, halyard, uh, flag halyard for the top of the mast. So these are all the parts that I need to do some work with. Um, but anyway, it's just the handrails that are going to need to be refinished. Just a ton of stuff going on here. I'm going to have to come back down and clean the shop out again at some point. But that's beside the point. Uh, I talked to my starter guy and we determined that the three wires that go to the starter, one of them is the main power coming off the batteries for the starter. One of the wires connects to the same terminal and that is going to provide power back up to the switch. That's where the switch gets its power from. The third wire is the one coming back from the switch that goes to the starter to tell the solenoid to kick in and fire up the starter. So now that I know that, uh, I'm going to go back out and let's try to install the starter, see if we can get it running and winterize the engine like we hoped to do the last time. The, yesterday I went out to the boat and hooked up the battery charger to the batteries, so hopefully we've got a good charge on the batteries today and we'll be able to get the engine running. So that's my goal again goal again for the day. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I have peeled back the cover off the cockpit. Taking a look at this battery looks like it is 100% charged. So that's a good sign. Um, let us go below and see what we can do. It's getting cold and I need to turn off my outdoor shower and winterize that. But I can't do that until I get the engine winterized because the two of them are connected to the same water line and I can't shut off the water until I get this engine done. So, got to get that done quick because it's almost Thanksgiving and it's getting cold here and we're going to get a freeze pretty soon. So one little challenge, the old starter, these two wires here both go on the positive terminal. One, oh, this is the main coming off the battery. We'll clean that one up a little bit. I think that one is coming off the key, providing power. And again, it's a screw on, it's a round terminal which the new starter does not have. It has this wire so we may have to cut that fitting off and crimp it on. Of course wires are different sizes and so the crimp on fitting is not going to work as well as I would have liked. Then where does this black and red Got too many wires in here. So we will clean up this battery lead right now. Nice shiny brass. I like to see that. So I know starter goes in that way. This lead is going to go there. So there's one of them that's going to click on. And then that. 
I'm assuming both of these, yep, yeah, they'll both fit over. Ah, interesting. Okay, I think that goes there. Let's check that out. Yep. So that wire goes to the altern comes off the alternator. Three wires coming off of the alternator, according to the wiring diagram. I've got a heck of a lot more than three wires coming off of this alternator. Positive going to the battery switch, optional, and then that going straight to the starter. And then two wires, here's the positive, coming off of the battery, going to the starter. And two wires coming in here, going to the starter motor. I think I've made some progress. So, I pulled the battery switch and determined which wire goes to terminal 1 and battery 1, terminal 2, battery 2. The main wire, obviously there's three wires in there. One comes from battery 1, one comes from battery 2, and one goes out. The one that goes out comes straight down here to the starter motor and it has another wire that comes off of it, a, a larger red wire. And that larger red wire is right here. And there's a connection there wrapped with you know, a screw connector with some electrical tape wrapped around it. So that is feeding main power out of the battery switch. One going to the starter motor, one going to this, which then, uh, I think that goes out and down here into this and then it comes out of this and comes back in here and then connects to this red wire and then this red wire looks like it goes to the amp meter um, and then coming off of that it must you know feed power to everything else um, so when you shut the batteries off you're killing everything going to the boat you know, basically disconnecting both batteries now if and then there's a main ground wire going back here to the back of the block and then this wire coming off of the alternator I think connects again connects to the positive so that's going to be sending charge from the alternator into the main wire coming back in here and then feeding backwards to the batteries to charge the batteries and if it's on battery one it'll charge one if it's on two it'll charge two if it's on both it'll charge both batteries so we'll see what that does I've labeled all of those wires now um, now I need to put a tester on the other two wires and go back to the switch and just confirm that those are the wires that go to the switch, which I'm 99% confident they are. But we'll try that right now. My GoPro was dying when I was outside filming work on the mast with the GoPro 10. Ended up finishing up with the GoPro 7. Um, subsequent research shows that the GoPro 10 um, overheats when the camera is just sitting on a tripod. Uh, there's not enough airflow around it and especially when I've got it in this special case that's got the external microphone um, clipped to it so I think it just makes ex exacerbates the problem um, there is a setting they talked about that I can change a tripod setting which I haven't figured out yet and haven't had the time to try to do it but anyway I may work on that at some point all right so let's see what we can do to try to check the wires I don't have one wire with alligator clips that's long enough so clipping a bunch of them together okay key is off all right I've connected on to the white wire okay now let's connect on to the red wire That's not 
fit. Why not? That is that big heavy duty red wire that is running through the wiring harness. Well, unless the wire is broken, which, if that's the case, that would explain why the starter wasn't starting. Because I'm not feeding power to the switch and then feeding it back here to the Bendix. Huh. Oh, that sucks. Okay. And then one of these wires coming off the alternator goes into that little box in the bulkhead. Here's another wire coming off of the alternator. That's that little red wire up here. This red wire. Uh, and goes down there. So, it is this big trunk cable. There is no wires coming out of it between the cockpit and here. It comes all the way down here. There's a big red wire there. All right, so if we pull that. Aha! We've got w the wires connected into this plug here. That has to go in that way. Once we do that, we get nothing. So we're done. So no, it's that one. Which means it's got to be this one here. So from here to here, we got nothing. Interesting. Oh, wait a minute. There's another big red wire coming out of this trunk. Interesting. So that wire goes from the other side of the alternator. All right, let's check continuity across the fuse terminals. Okay, so the fuse is fine. See if that's going to the fuse. No. What in the world? Where the heck does that wire go? So this red wire that appears to go to the starter motor and goes into the wiring harness somewhere. Wait, I see where it goes into the wiring harness. It's a big heavy duty red wire. The only other heavy duty red wire that's in the wiring harness is here and here. It's not any of those. Is where the heck does it go? Aha! Okay. All right. So that wire from the switch comes back here and goes to one side of the fuse. I think I need to take that block off again. I do see some corrosion on the fuse block and I think that may be some of my problem in that the fuse is okay but it's too corroded there and it's not making contact. Cross your fingers. It should get continuity here. Yes, thank goodness. But I get it on the fuse, but I don't get it here. So we're not getting continuity through the fuse. Now the fuse itself is good, 
but it's not making contact and we can see how corroded this terminal block is. So that is why we are not getting power back up to the switch because it's not going across the fuse. Now if I put the fuse in and test continuity from terminal to terminal, I still get nothing. All right, so where does the other side of the fuse block go? Yep, another terminal that is in horrible shape. Now, let's see if we can figure out where this one goes. Red and white wire. There's a red and white wire. And that's a red and white wire going into the wiring harness. Okay, well let's put it back on here so we don't screw up. Okay, so that goes into the wiring harness as a red and white wire. That little pigtail coming out of the wiring harness dead ends. So I don't need to worry about that. There's nothing else coming out of the wiring harness going all the way out. So now let's hook on to the red and white lead. I'm going to plug these back together. All right then. That going to the other side of the ignition switch. So when we turn the ignition switch on, we already have power coming to one side of the alternator, no, two sides of the alternator from the battery lead. When we turn the ignition switch on, we're sending power to this leg also. And here's another badly corroded terminal. This new terminal, so that is the ignition switch. This other side, so coming through that connector, from the ignition switch goes through the connector, goes to the fuse block, from the fuse block, comes back through here, connects to this side of the alternator, where it connects to this little red wire, This wire, this wire. It comes out. Okay. That looks like that goes into the amp meter. Also, alternator, battery. Those are those three wires. So we're taking power from the battery, we're feeding it into the alternator. We're also feeding it into the fuse box. The fuse box is then feeding it to the ignition switch, which is bringing it back to the Bendix on the starter. Piece of cake. So we need to connect those together. And they're dissimilar sizes. A big ass wire going to a little wire. They don't really make connectors, crimp on connectors, that'll do that. But we absolutely know that we've got a different starter. I can take that boot off because we don't need that. And is that wire going to this? And then going into the Bendix. Well, that is the standard. One of these standard connector. Do I have a large enough one to get onto that wire? Blue is too small. I think I want yellow. Yep, yellow is the right size. And I'm all out of yellow. Crimp on. Yes, I'm going to run down to the auto parts store and see if I can get a crimp on connector of that size and then see if I can get a new fuse block. And if not, we'll really scratch the daylights out of this thing and see if we can't get it working again. And then hopefully we can put stuff back together and see if we're a go. Okay, so I went down to my shop 
I have a rat tail file. And I filed the inside of these out. Now, if I put the fuse back in, now if I test across, ha, okay. Now I'm getting contact through the fuse. So the next next step is to reinstall this. Eh, you know what? Before we do that, why don't we try connecting these and then we think that power this terminal connects to the starter motor and gets positive. So we're connecting that. I'll grab one of these little things, make my life a little easier. So that should go ha, both sides of that. Absolutely. And now I should be able to get continuity out here to the red lead on the ignition switch. Uh, which is going to come all the way back to here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to crimp on this connector, which should then allow us to connect that in. That terminal will go there onto the battery. Do not drop the nut into the bilge. Okay, that's tight. Phew, there's one. Now let's try to get this one out. That one's on. And that is the right socket. Reverse direction because we're reattaching. Okay, so theoretically we have starter motor installed, batteries both. And turn the key. Let's see what happens. Ow, son of a gun. I just hit my head on the frame. Well, that was freaking awesome. Because we got this new starter motor to turn over. I am now going to go turn water on. And see if we can get this bad boy running. We'll fill the bucket up with water. Intake will pull the water out. Run the engine a little bit. Get it warm. And then I will shut the water off, pour the antifreeze in. We'll suck the antifreeze up and run that through the engine. All right. Got water filling the bucket up. Let's see if we can get this bad boy running.
somewhat successful today. I have figured out what was wrong with the engine, why it wouldn't start, new starter motor, wiring is all connected, all the contacts are cleaned up, and I've discovered that it is in gear. So there's a problem in the transmission. I can't get it to go into neutral. I don't know if it's the shift cable that is broken, frozen, or whether it's in the transmission. We'll have to figure that one out, add it to the list of things to think about. Fortunately, the propeller is not on the boat, so the shaft is just spinning and not risking injuring anyone. But the engine is now got antifreeze pumped through it, so we can, well, put it to bed, and now I can drain all the water lines for the outside shower in the house. So I'm going to cover up the boat, um, disconnect the battery and pull that out and call it a day, um, successful day. Um, so if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe if you want to get more updates and uh, as, as new videos get posted. Um, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly am thrilled that we got this far along. Um, so, good progress today. We'll keep going. Thanks. Bye.